After having a closer look at this version of the car, you're gonna to have to disregard a bit of this video where I say something different. Now this is actually a new version of the long range all wheel drive. It has a different battery pack. It's now using lithium ion phosphate batteries. It therefore has a little bit less range, around 30 miles less range versus the old long range vehicle, but it's much cheaper. However, Whilst the lithium ion phosphate battery cell pack is probably a big advantage in terms of overall life longevity out of the battery pack, how many years you're gonna get out of it, and you know, day-to-day -day use, you can discharge and charge. The cells really do 100%, it doesn't really matter. There is one drawback, and that is that it doesn't qualify for the full incentive. You only get the $3,725 incentive, not the full $7,500 incentive, meaning that it is $6,000 cheaper than the performance model, but $7,000 more expensive than the base model, the cheapest Model 3. However, the performance model gets the full $7,500 credit, meaning the performance model ends up only being around about $3,000 more expensive than this. I don't get them all right, that's for sure, but I did get this one right. I did promise you all that the Model 3 long range was coming back. Not very long ago I said this, and yes, it has, which is fantastic to see. Now, I don't know if you can hear those fireworks going up outside, but every single night here, at 12 o'clock at night, they sound fireworks off every single day. I've been here now for nearly a month. Every night, 11 p.m., 12 a.m., no one in the whole area seems to know why people shoot fireworks off at these exact times of the night every single day. It's truly bizarre. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Thank you for tuning in. I'm in Thailand here, Pattaya in Thailand, simply because my wife's here undergoing treatment for her stage four cancer. And so we came here with the boys so that she wouldn't be by herself. Tesla, they started selling the Model 3 long range variant in the UK for business owners only. That was about a month ago. And at the time I said there was zero chance that Tesla wouldn't be selling it very soon to general customers. I said, if you want this car, very, 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 very likely that it would go on sale very soon. Fortunately, it has. Why do I say fortunately? Because I think this is a really good option. I mean, really the performance version of the Model 3, it's great, but you don't need it. The Model 3 long range is already insanely fast. It'll blow your mind how fast this is, and it gets more range than the performance version, and it's quite a bit cheaper. It's now on Tesla's website for $47,000 US dollars. And the vehicle was taken off the website last year because apparently Elon Musk said the waitlist was too long. Tesla couldn't actually provide the cars. Wasn't able to supply enough of the cars to give customers an experience where they weren't gonna be waiting for a year and feeling like, uh, stuff it, I'm not gonna buy a Tesla. That's what does happen quite often to various brands, especially Volkswagen apparently in Europe. Owners just go, ah, all right, I've waited now for 10 months. I'm not gonna wait any longer. BMW, apparently it's quite a common experience for people with BMW. Uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E, there was an owner's forum in China, which doesn't exist anymore because it took so long for Ford to bring the Mustang Mach-E out that they all just went, ah, let's just buy a Tesla Model Y and other cars. But apparently the majority of them bought Tesla Model Ys instead because they didn't wanna keep waiting. So I think this is part of the reason Tesla pulled this car now it is back. So what is the difference between this model and the standard range model? Should you buy this instead? Well, for starters, this model gets the full tax incentive. So yes, I absolutely would buy this instead of the standard range model. The standard range model does have the LFP battery. I just think the advantages of this car, and it does get the full incentive, mean it's almost the same price as the standard range model, unless you're leasing. Now, if you're leasing, the standard range model, then I'd be going standard range. But if you're not leasing, this is the Tesla Model 3 I would buy between all the different models you can get now. This new configuration is in addition to the Model 3 performance and in addition to the standard range model, which is the cheapest model. If you order one now, Tesla is saying you can get it sometime. I think now the configurator has changed to approximately start of June. What's the range? Well, it has 325 miles of range, according to Tesla. Top speed is 145 miles an hour. Zero to 60 miles an hour is 4.2 seconds. So that's zero to 100 kilometers an hour, 4.2 seconds. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. That's faster than almost every hot hatch. In fact, 
I think it's faster than every hot hatch except for the much more expensive AMG A class and also the RS3. Those are maybe a tiny bit faster, but of course you need to launch them perfectly and you need to get the revs correct. In an EV, it's so easy to get that performance. Tesla says the vehicle qualifies for the tax credit and they said they stopped taking orders last year after the wait list was too high and too long. The automaker said it would offer the vehicle when production was ramped once again. So this Model 3, where is it built? Is it from China? No, it's not. It's built at the Fremont factory in Northern California. And it's the second most popular vehicle in Tesla's lineup following the Model Y. So the Model Y, the standard range Model Y now available, all wheel drive, 4680 battery cells, structural battery pack, obviously giga castings. That's the most popular vehicle that Tesla currently sell. I think this will probably be the second most popular vehicle they sell in North America this year. But that will all change. Everything's going to change. It's going to be very interesting to see how everything changes once the Project Highland Model 3 comes out by about the middle of this year. I think that will reignite a Tesla sales bonanza, at least for a couple of months. People are going to see it and think, well, wow, that looks way better. And they're going to realize that there's 20 different changes to that car versus the old model. It's not a refresh. If you want to see the 20 changes that I point out, I'll put a link in the description to my video about those. So the Model Y long range, it, I mean, people think that it's rear wheel drive, but it's actually not. It's an all wheel drive vehicle. If it was rear wheel drive, it would get even more range than this because the model in the UK, that's rear wheel drive. So therefore it means there's no front motor. It's about a hundred kilos lighter, about 210 pounds lighter. So then you're getting a bit more range out of that car. I'm not sure why Tesla's chosen to go all-wheel drive. Maybe because a lot of people in North, parts of North America would prefer all-wheel drive because of wet roads and snow and that kind of thing. So I think it's great. When I heard this vehicle was being released, technically I'm actually incorrect because I said the rear-wheel drive version, the long-range rear-wheel drive version would be available for sale. This is not the same as the one in the UK. This is an all-wheel drive version of the long-range vehicle. But at this price, Getting one of these for $40,000 US dollars after the tax incentives, it's a really good deal. I definitely would consider it. But the Model Y, in my opinion, makes more sense as a car for most people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching.